Well, I'm surprised he even got what he got. I, 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 but I, I did not do any lit drops because I was I, when, I, when I was planning on doing lit drops. Yeah, it's all started. So yeah, <laughs> no, I hear you. Thank you, <laughs> Betty. Could you uh, speak again for a test? Yes. Hi. Thank you, Betty. You're welcome. Hey, Eric, do we actually have like a list of who's all called in, what the numbers are or something? Do we have like a list or anything to, to see how many people are called? Do you see? Oh, it is. Cool. Um. And we're considered one of them, or? No, there's actually seven outside. Nine people on the panel. One okay. of them is this uh, us talking here, the other is Jeff. Okay, there's seven. Seven Collins, okay. All right, it's uh, 5 30. Um, I'm going to call the um, meeting of Public Works together. Um, before we do the Pledge of Allegiance, because this is uh, being done remotely, could we uh, carefully and slowly, just uh, one by one, um, call off who's all online so that we can make, uh, make a note of that? Um, I'm Todd Wolf, Council, uh, Council Chair for Public Works. Uh, Dean Decker, Alderperson <laughs> District 6. Right, Ryan, Ryan Thornton is on the call, older person, District 8. Rose Phillips here, older person for District 7 on the line. This is Betty Ashley, I'm on the line, and I'm the older person for District 4. Thomas Cameron is on the phone, uh, Assistant City Attorney. Steve Jossart, Public Works. Mike Wilmes, Rick Public Works. Rick Nye, Public Works. I believe that's everybody that's calling online. We have Dave Beeple and Ryan Sazma also at uh, City Hall. Again, also uh, Daryl Hoffland and the most important person, Don Sokolowski. <laughs> So if you could join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, I would appreciate it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Uh, we just did the, the introduction, so I, I, I appreciate that. The reason I did it first is because we needed to make sure everybody was present to start the meeting. Um, so we'll move to 2.1, approval of the minutes for March 24th, 2020. Looking for a motion. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Who uh, uh, motion the second? Uh, second from Ryan. Thank you. When, when people um, are talking, Let's, we want to mute our computer, so thank you for that. And then when you do call out, um, either to ask a question and or make an approval, please, um, if you could give us your name so that Dawn can document it accordingly. So thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 That's all of them. I should say, we should say aye, Todd, aye. Dean, yes. and so okay. on. Sorry. I'm getting used to this. Okay, any opposed? Hi, Betty. Aye, aye. Any opposed? Hearing none. 
Um, it is approved. Uh, so we'll move on to 3.1, Resolution 198-19-20, April 8th, 2020, Document 5.2, Resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract with Alliant Energy for future necessary work to restore electrical services following an unplanned electricity outage at the city facility. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Dave? Uh, th this, this, this resolution um, item for your consideration this evening is a contract with Alliant Energy, mainly to uh, perform this type of work for our wastewater treatment plant and, and related facilities. We have many of our, these facilities have direct feeds from Alliant Energy. And uh, in an emergency at times when there's outages, we need Alliant to then restore power. This is just a contract formalizing that work. Um, it's critical, obviously, to keep that, uh, those facilities running 24 seven as is needed at the treatment plant. So, um, and I know Steve is on the line if you have any questions, but um, this is fairly straightforward. This is a, a renewal of kind of an agreement we've had with them in the past for similar work. Right, so it's just boilerplate contract to contract. Steve, did you have any questions? I can't see if you're raising your hand. <laughs> no, David summed it up. We, we typically don't use them for this. We take our own problems, but in the event we had a problem like at a lift station or something and we need to get it restored fast, they're available and they're trained to work on this type of equipment so we can utilize their services. Perfect. Okay. Um, any questions on that? Hearing none, uh, looking for a motion. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Ryan will second. Thank you for that motion and support. Again, any questions on this, this motion? Hearing none, all in favor, Todd, aye. Dean, aye. Ryan, aye. Aye, aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, motion is approved. Moving on to 3.2, resolution 200-19-20, April 8th, 2020, document 5.4, resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute, execute sorry, a memorandum of agreement between the Wisconsin State Historic Preservation Officer and the City of Sheboygan regarding the demolition of the Sheboygan Municipal uh, Auditorium and Armory located at 516 Broughton Drive, Sheboygan. Go ahead, David. Again, um, another item for you. Mr. 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 Chair. Yes? Chad Pelisek is on the line. Sorry, I came on late. No, not a problem. Thank you, Chad. So if David doesn't mind, I'll take over for this one. But what this is, is we... Um, when the city executed the redevelopment agreement at the time with the Armory Group, uh, Jennifer Lurkey's the Armory Community Group, um, one of the requirements or milestones of that agreement was they needed to put the Armory on the National Register of Historic Places, which they did. So after the council terminated that agreement and... Um, and, and we moved into the demolition stage. We needed to work with the Wisconsin Historical Society, uh, the Historic Preservation Officer, to determine a mitigation plan that would be agreeable to everybody to try to um, mitigate the loss of the armory, but, but also preserve the history of it. So we hired a consultant, that, a historic preservation consultant, that helped us uh, put together a plan. She reached out to a number of uh, stakeholders that were both for and against uh, the demolition of the armory, talked to them about what the city planned to do uh, to preserve the heritage of the armory and, you know, in lieu of demolition, and then um, got a few of them to even become parties of the signature of the group. So what the agreement that you see uh, before you is, is kind of a, a 
contemplation or whatever the word is of, of all these different things that the city has agreed that we will do as part of it with the largest one being the creation of this documentary that we will do uh, in partnership with the uh, WSTS and the Sheboygan County Historical Research Center um, to put a call out to people to submit their experiences and thoughts and things that they have as it relates to the armory. And then we will pick a number of those and try to put it into a timeline of events that happened at the armory um, to try to document that all in one location and a documentary that would be available to the public, both uh, at the Mead Library, at WSTS, and on their video on demand, and then um, the Sheboygan County Historical Research Center may sell DVDs, DVDs and, and use that as a fundraiser for their organization. The other thing that we agreed to do is that it, as part of demolition, if we can preserve some of the things that the Historical Museum has asked for, um, a walkthrough will happen before demolition happens, and then the contractor will be asked to try to preserve a few of the items that the Historical Museum was looking for, and then the city will be required to transport those items to the Historical Museum. Those items that I recall are an S that's above the stage. If that, in the main entrance, there was like an art like a cannon implant in the floor, if that can be taken out, I'm not sure. And then there's, a, I think, a plaque on the wall that talks about the armory. The last thing that's in that agreement is an update to the city's historical preservation architectural survey that identifies potential districts within the community that could become historic districts. So the city would agree to work with the consultant to update that plan that was done back in 2007 to make it relevant for 2020. So those are the things that we need to do. We do not have to have these things done before demolition can proceed. We need to just meet the timeline and keep in contact with the historic preservation officer in Madison on our progress. And should the council consent to this agreement, the historical society will sign off on this agreement. The parties that are party to this agreement will sign off on it and then demolition can proceed. So if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer it. Sorry, it was a little long-winded. Chad, I just have a couple of statements real quickly before we open the floor um, to our listeners here. Uh, in the very beginning, you said that the, that the committee had canceled the agreement. Actually, the, correct me if I'm wrong, but the agreement timeline had expired. It wasn't that we canceled. It was that it was expired because I remember we actually asked if they needed additional time and they had stated no. So would you agree with that statement? Well, they, yes, I would agree with that statement. They, there was milestones in the agreement and they didn't meet the milestones. Correct, correct, okay. The, yes. other, the, other, the other question that I have is when you talk about the, there were items that the historical group um, is interested in, and you had listed off three of them, did we, I didn't see it, but did we put a limitation to the cost of, uh, of saving these, these uh, what I'll you know, call artifacts just because of the age of the building, but um, there is a cost that would be incurred by, co by the construction group to be able to, like the, 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 the floor tile mural, concept that could be very costly um, to try to preserve it and save it uh, just because of the way it was originally constructed. Was there a, a cap or anything put into it? No, I, we talked about that and I don't know that the historic uh, society would agree to that. I think if it, they're really looking at the um, contractor to, to, to tell us if he thinks he has a way of getting that out, that it's the most cost-effective way to do it. And if there's not, then all parties would have to decide, decide that, you know, that that's not going to be feasible and that one wouldn't be able to be preserved. But I don't think, unfortunately, that the um, historical society cares about cost. I think they just want to make sure that we can either do it or we can't do it. Well, the reason I'm bringing it up is, like you just said, if they don't have a concern with cost, we as, as city leadership, we, we do have to be cautious of the cost because 
that is a deciding point. Anything can be done, as you know, with time and money. Um, that's why I was just asking if, if that's something that should have been put into the agreement or not. And you um, I guess what I would, I would, I don't have the answer for that. I'd have to go back to the consultant and have her have that conversation with the historic preservation officer and see if they would agree to amending it that it's some dollar value. And I guess you guys could make that a, amendment to your motion. And then we could, staff could go back and try to get an answer for the council meeting. Okay. Well, I'll leave that for the committee to decide if that's something that they they feel is necessary. Um, any additional questions from the committee? Uh, yeah, I guess. Chad, it's, it's Ryan. Um, you mentioned something about like a tour. Now, when you're talking about a tour of the building, what what is that like with uh, the historical society? Is that with the public? Is that, what, what does that mean? Can you clarify that a little bit? It's a, we originally, uh, Travis Gross was originally in the building and there was a list put together of items that he felt the historical museum might have an interest in. We, unfortunately, none of us can find that list. So the idea behind this is that Travis uh, and his staff at the museum would go through the building before the city demolishes it just to make sure that they have all the items quantified that they believe they could have room for to put on display so it's just with okay. the, it's just Got with it. Travis Gross and a few of his curators at the historical museum okay thanks for the clarification Dean you had a yeah. question yes yeah. uh, I just wanted to ask Dave if he thought if you have any any thoughts on what you think it costs and that if you know any idea at all I mean just a quick yeah I, I I'm, I'm thinking like that terrazzo floor if we'd cut and try to preserve some of that that that's you know maybe five grand maybe ten at the most and really I, I I really don't see a tremendous amount of expense in terms of trying to save much because there's really not much to save yet of the okay. building anything of worth value has probably been removed and preserved elsewhere um and, and i think what chad is is talked about and he's really worked really hard at this with the historical society and the groups um i think it's going to be a lot of video type of documentation and remembrance in that sort so i don't think you're going to see a lot of physical um, and clearly, as part of the demo, uh, that can be, you know, we can negotiate that with a contractor too ahead of time that prior to you, them getting in is this could be sought out and, and preserved somehow. Sure. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Any additional questions for the com it, from the committee? It, it's Ryan again. It's Ryan again. Um, you know, I, I know that the Armory has been a, a continuous saga of... of just events, um, to put it, uh, say at the least. Um, and I, I do appreciate, you know, um, the good effort um, by the city to preserve some elements of, of um, the historic uh, building. Um, and, you know, whatever we can do to accommodate the historical size society's request, I think, is, is a big, um, um, big step that we can take uh, as a sign of good faith. So I, I appreciate that. All right. Any additional questions from the committee? Hearing none, looking, uh, listening for a motion. I make a motion to approve. Looking, looking. I'll second, Ryan. All right, so we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Todd, aye. Dean, aye. Ryan, aye. Eddie, aye. All right. Any, uh, any against? Hearing none. Motion is approved. Thank you very much. Moving forward to 3.3, resolution 201-19-20, April 14th, 2020, direct referral resolution authorizing F3 Marina to renovate the Harbor Center Marina second floor and to authorize the appropriate city officials to execute the First Amendment to Harbor uh, Center Marina Management Agreement with F3 Marina. David, you're up again. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, this is another item for your consideration this evening. We've talked about this um, a little bit at a previous meeting, uh, talked about some of the agreements, some of the, the conditions of moving forward with this. 
working with the city attorney's office as well as the city administrator's office along with F3 officials. Um, it's come to an agreement that what is being proposed is that F3 will create a separate LLC to manage and operate this area. That was one of the concerns was under the, uh, the existing marina management uh, agreement, there's certain incentives in, in terms of uh, financial and performance. And if this was added to their pro forma, um, they could disproportionately um, benefit from the, this enhancement financially without necessary, with especially considering the city is doing the outlay, initial outlay for this capital improvement as the owner of the facility. Since then, what we've come up with is the proposal of suggesting a net income of the operation of the city would receive 70% of that net income with LLC, the F3 Marina's <coughs> new LLC receiving 30% acting basically as a management fee. The proposal, in a sense, remains the same in terms of the renovations. However, the, the, the cost has come down slightly. And what you, you see in front of you this evening is the renovation cost and equipment cost is approximately 61000 From In the past, it was around 80000 or right around 81000 in the past. Uh, so uh, we... we F3 is really excited about it. We're excited about reactivating that space um, and ultimately getting this moved and uh, get it going for this upcoming boating season. Um, I guess with that, uh, City Administrator Hoffland is here this evening. I know Thomas is online as well. He's had some input from his office. And I guess we're here to answer any questions. But Daryl, could you give us uh, some comments? Uh, thank you, uh, Chair Wolf. Um, one of the questions that came up early, early in the discussion is um, being that it's, it's a new uh, initiative, uh, especially for F3 Marina, uh, as uh, David Beeble identified, uh, they're forming a new LLC. Uh, the question came uh, up as part of the discussions, uh, what if the first year or maybe the second year there is no profit? Uh, or potentially a a deficit or deficiency in, in the amount of the revenues, and they identified that they, even though on the profits there's a seventy thirty split, should there be no profit or a, a de deficit, they would absorb a hundred percent of that cost. So there's really no risk identified to the city as we proceed. I th thought it was important for the record to identify that. Oh, that's a very good point. Thank you. I, I personally, um, just to give the committee a little background on this, I think this is a great opportunity. We've struggled um, kind of getting more activity in the, the marina area and taking care of uh, the, um, the patrons that use that facility and pay, pay a, a certain fee to actually utilize it. And I know it's been a controversy in the past, but we have... A beautiful marina. It brings a lot of uh, a lot of business to to the city. It brings a lot of activity. Uh, whether they use that facility or not, there's still a lot of action down uh, on the river and uh, people using the the facilities down there. So I personally, I know it's been a controversy whether we wanted F3 or another business to come in and do that. Um, I think this agreement is is a good one. Um, it has minimal exposure for the city and if anything it uh if something wouldn't work out we would have a um it basically laid out for another business to to uh take a swing at it so any questions from the committee uh i just my All the person Phillips here with a question. yes i am just noticing that the cost of the renovations is um, the responsibility of the city and will come from the marina fund. I'm just curious, what is the current balance of the marina fund? Um, Rose, we're going to have to get that, that information. I don't have that in front of me. I'd show it to you, but I can't show okay. it to you. <laughs> But it's a very good question. I, I do want to say that we've had um, we've had some deficits in the past, 
but we'll get that information for you. Any additional questions while we're waiting? I just wanted to make the comment that I, 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 I like the, uh, the, um, the uh, added amendment that does cover us, especially in this time period. And um, I also, uh, the only other question is, is, it, is there a tavern or a liquor license available for that one right now? And that's the only, that's, I guess that's the only question I have. <laughs> I, I, I believe so. Yeah, that was going to be a question for school. Okay. Do they do they already have a liquor license? Part, what was that, Ryan? I said, do, do they already have a liquor license? Because it says they have an old bar, and they're converting that into a storage room, and they're moving moving the bar. So I didn't know if they already have that liquor license, or or, or if that changes some dynamic with it. Because I know we're 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 always kind of close in how many licenses we can hand out. I don't know if this is one of those situations. No, I, I, I believe they're just going to have the what beer and wine first. Would that be a correct statement, Daryl? Uh, in, in response to your question, uh, as it relates to the liquor license, uh, I think the goal is with uh, an opening date planned by the end of June or first part of July, is that during the process of renewing uh, existing liquor licenses, uh, the city clerk would become aware if there are any um, non-reserve related licenses. As a result, uh, the licensing hearing and public safety committee could consider uh, an application of the Marina F3 uh, staff uh, to possibly receive one of those licenses that would become open as part of the relicensing period, which starts July 1st of each year. Okay. In regards to the earlier question uh, by Alder Phillips, as it relates to the financials, the existing uh, fund, uh, we have a special revenue fund, fund called Harbor Center Marina Fund. There is uh, a negative uh, existing fund balance uh, dating back to the original construction or development of the marina. Uh, However, uh, annually for the last couple of years, the city has transferred money from uh, uh, a fund that is no longer active other than the fact that it has a, a fund balance. So as part of the 2020 approved budget for the Harbor Center Marina Fund, there is a transfer amount of $225,000 into this fund. And it's part of that transfer revenue that the city would pay for uh, the improvements that are outlined in the uh, pro forma provided by F3 Marina. Thank you, Daryl. Alder Phillips, do you have any additional questions? No, thank you. Okay. Um, looking for a motion? Okay, I'll make a motion to approve. Dean? Uh, this is I'm Ryan. Sorry. I'll second. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that motion and support. Um, any any additional questions? Hearing none. All in favor? Todd, aye. Dean, aye. Ryan, oh, aye. <laughs> Eddie, aye. Okay, <laughs> and that, that was a rose eye, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, any any opposed? Ayes have it. It's approved. Should do a roll call. I think it'd be easier. 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 Still roll call. Okay. All right. I, I'll do that. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So we'll move on to 3.4. Sorry, we're <laughs> learning a little here. Uh, GL 4619 20, April 8th, 2020, document 7.1, general ordinance creating a no parking zone on the north side of Michigan Avenue, uh, east of 11th Street. David? Mr. Chairman, then the next uh, 3.4 through 3.7, these general ordinances up for your consideration this evening. I'm going to defer to the city engineer, Mr. Ryan Sasma, as he's been instrumental in drafting these perfect thank you uh with the one for 11th street and michigan avenue there's a driveway that exits on the michigan avenue it's real close to the 11th street intersection and for various reasons people are constantly parking in front of this gentleman's driveway 
Uh, so at the request of the property owner and Sheboygan PD, they'd like to have this no parking from here to corner because it'd just be a lot easier for them to enforce uh, the no parking zone more so than someone parking too close to a driveway. It's an issue. I've seen it a bunch of times. I just think there's a lot of a lot of activity up in that area and people sure. are just parking there. So okay, that's it. Any uh, any questions from the committee on three point four? Okay, I'm I'll make, looking I'll for a motion. motion. Uh, Dean, I'll make a motion to approve. Betty will second. Okay, uh, and thank you for that motion and support. Any additional questions on three point four? Hearing none, I will do a roll call vote. Todd, aye. Dean, Dean, aye. Ryan. Aye. Alder Phillips. Aye. Alder Ackley. Aye. Any of, <laughs> not, none opposed. <laughs> uh, motion is approved. Thank you. Uh, 3.5 GO 4719-20, uh, um, April 8th, 2020, document 7.2. Uh, general ordinance creating a no parking zone on the east side of North Fifth Street, North yeah North Fifth Street uh, near the intersection of Center Avenue. Ryan, yeah, this intersection of Fifth and Center is located down by the uh, courthouse. So parking on Fifth Street is very dense. And what happens is people park so close to the intersection of Center Avenue on <laughs> Fifth Street that when people want to exit Center Avenue, uh, the sight distance is real tight. They just crowd the corner too much. So we've done this before to increase the sight distance. You just eliminate parking 30 feet on both sides of the, on both sides of the street. And it, it, it helps in, um, like for the sight distance and for safety. Perfect. Okay, any questions on 3.5? Looking for a motion? Motion to approve. Dean. Uh, Ryan, second. Thank you for that motion and support. Again, any questions? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Todd, aye. Dean? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Ackley? Aye. Hearing no nays, um, it is uh, 3.5 is approved. 3.6? GO 4819-20, um, April 8th, 2020, document 7.3, general ordinance creating a no parking zone on the north side of St. Clair Avenue, west of 13th Street, uh, reconstruction in the Roosevelt uh, Park, located at 1103 Mead Avenue. Ryan? Uh, last fall, the Sheboygan Leadership Academy, which is located on St. Clair Avenue between 14th and 13th Street, they built the mid-block crosswalk to go from their school across the street over to their um, playground area. Yep. And what happens is uh, when parents are, are dropping off or picking up kids, they park real close to this crosswalk. So the, the principal in the Leadership Academy asked if we would just eliminate parking like on 20 feet on both sides of the crosswalk just to make it safer. Okay, perfect. Um, looking for a motion. Motion to approve, Dean. Rose will second. Ryan. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for that motion and support. Any questions on 3.6? Hearing none, roll call vote. Todd, aye. Dean? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Ackley? Aye. Hearing all ayes, it is approved. No nays. Moving to 3.7, GO 49-19-20, uh, April 8th, 2020, document 7.4, general ordinance, placing stop signs at the northwest and southwest corners of Barrett Street and Lincoln. Ryan. Okay, yes, this is an uncontrolled intersection. It's, yes. It's a four-way stop. With really no no traffic control at all. So what what Public Works is going to do is do some minor intersection uh, reconstruction, very very minor. Add these stop signs, add some uh, striping. Therefore, we'll have a, a two way stop at a four way intersection. Excellent. Looking for a motion on three point seven. Motion to approve. Dean. Looking for a this second. Ryan, I'll second. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. All right. Look. Any quest Any further questions? I know this is a good one. It's in one of them that I brought forward. Hearing none, uh, roll call vote. Todd, aye. 
Decker? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Ackley? Aye. Hearing all approved, uh, motion is approved. Moving to 3.8, quarterly performance report for Department of Public Works, discussion only. Mr. Beeble. Uh, yes, as part of the annual budgeting process, uh, many of these benchmarks and, and performance measures are included in the budget. And what we have for you this evening is basically a summary report of those, those key measures for your consideration for review of the first quarter. Uh, in, included in here are uh, also the, the 2020 annual goals to give you a kind of a, a sense of where we are as well. So in, in terms of like City Hall, we have, you know, the amount of therms used and utility costs. And it, it's, it's going to be especially interesting with City Hall this year. We'll finally get a full, a full year of, to track now being in the new facility versus the old. Um, you know, it, so we'll be continuing to monitor that. And we also track the number of work orders. And being in a new building, lots of little things are creeping up as people are getting... Uh, settled into their new work environment. So um, this year will be a, a great year to track that. We have civil defense, very, very uh, interesting is that we have one signal down. Right now it's being, it's under a contract and we're waiting for the contractor to come in and get that signal fixed. That's why it's at 88% instead of the 100%. Yeah, engineering, as we have, as it's, oh, um, some of the workloads that we measure there are, you know, plan reviews within the two-week submission and, and how many of the maps that we update annually as well. Maintenance at the MSB, our service building is uh, it's a 50-plus-year-old facility. In fact, this week, guys, of today, we just replaced our air conditioning unit on the roof as part of our 2020 capital plan. So that was a, a long overdue. The chiller that was up there was original and it no longer could be serviced with the Freon. So uh, that was an exciting uh, process today. Uh, half, about, probably about the third of the size of the unit was, rep was replaced today versus what was taken off. Again, tracking therms, utility costs. Again, these are, Measures, obviously, they affect the budget because the more therms we use, the more costly. But again, weather depend. It's a lot of uh, weather and cold and heating uh, cycles that will be uh, a factor in that as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Streets and alleys and sidewalks. We, we, we talk about our track filling every year and our, our yards of concrete. You know, first quarter, it's winter. So we're not doing too much. You know, it's January, February, March. Not a lot of uh, activity in, in, in this area. That's why you see, you know, the year to date for the quarter is, is very low, except for the potholes that we, we have. Moving forward in, in this, we, we, we look at stormwater management. Again, not a lot of activity because of the winter, winter in this area, but we, we do some in March, clearly marches with some of the spring storms, we'll, we'll try to get out as much as possible. Uh, street lighting and utility costs, we're tracking the costs you know, annually, and then what we have year to date so far. Uh, we, we're hoping that as, as, as we're converting to LEDs, we're using less energy, but we're adding more of our own city street lighting network. So it's kind of a, ongoing battle of adding more, but yet lowering the, the utility usage. So one of the things we'll be probably looking at here as well is, is looking at you know, the, the amount of energy needed that we're using, consuming on an annual basis versus just cost. In other words, kilowatt hours used versus cost. And is it see possible if there's a to add um, like fixtures or something it, like right. that? Right, we, 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 and we, we have some of that and some other, but in terms of what we, sh what we display, for the budget, you know, we don't want to have too much statistics because the budget would just get overwhelmed. So right. as part of our annual and other performance measures, that's a, you know, a, a supplemental tracking mechanism sure. that we have internally that we'll obviously share with you as well. Yeah, because I, I think it's, it helps you to justify the increase in cost. If, if you added 50 units and it was neutral, it'd be like, hey, good job. It's 
Correct. You know? And in fact, a lot of cases, what, what we've been able to do is over the years is Alliant Energy had a program where if you, you'd lock in your annual rate of cost that you've been paying them, but yet that was used to then finance energy reduction in terms of LED program. Right. So yeah, it was a somewhat of a free financing mechanism. And a lot of those have gone away, but uh, it, 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 we have increased clearly the number of fixtures that we're owning versus leasing from them. Excellent. Thank you. Again, now bridges, not, not, you know, with the winter, not too much, but snow and ice control, we had, you know, for the first quarter uh, this year, it wasn't too bad. We only had seven, seven operations. Uh, is the salt tonnage, you know, 1,300. It's quite a bit. Even, you know, even though you have seven, seven operations and it, the average was a low average in terms of snowfall, you still have to get out. And it depends in the case of icing. Um, you, um, in that case, so overall, uh, we're, we're, we're right on pace with our, with our snow and ice. It's pretty average, and uh, that's where we like to see it. David, you've got the salt in, in tons. Do we keep any measurements on uh, the liquid um, saline that you guys use? Because you guys do that a yeah, lot. Yeah, that's, a, that's probably, we could probably track the number of gallons that right. we apply. Because I, I think I, that's I will, a, um, I, and I think we probably have that as an, again, I can check with Jason yeah. and, and his staff. I know we do, we do track the number of, operations of, of pre-wedding and de-icing right. with that so and the reason i bring it up is that does reduce our salt usage correct to a, to a degree but it's also it's uh tires on the you know the, these are guys are out there and laying it out just like they would be traditional salt you know they're pre-wedding as you called it correct so yeah i think that yeah it's, it's so a, you'll see that number go up and you'll see the tonnage come down and that's a good a good balance right good point Thank you. Uh, traffic control signs, again, the, this is like the number of signs we replace, the number of new signs we install. Mailboxes are damaged that are replaced um, with snow operations. Traffic arrows, again, looking at the 18 actual for the year and 19, then you look at our goals for 2020 year to date. So we're, we're, we're well on pace. Uh, we've been able to do quite a bit during the, the first quarter. Garbage tons collected. We're, we're right where we need to be for the first uh, quarter. I'm anticipating, um, as long as the pandemic is happening, a lot of people are staying home, and we're, we're starting to see increased tonnages as, as people aren't going out and eating in restaurants, so they're eating more at home or consuming more, so it's ending up on the, you know, at the curbside. So we'll, we'll, after the, the second quarter, we should be able to have an, a comparison of where we're at from second quarter of years ago, the past couple of years versus moving forward. Okay. Street cleaning, we, you know, again, we don't get to do too much during that first quarter with the snow and ice on the streets. Um, it really kicks up in the second, third, and a little bit maybe in the fourth quarter. Weed control, again, not worried about that right now. The drop-off site, again, during the winter, not too much to report. It's, it's fairly, fairly minor. Uh, cemetery again, nothing really happening other than we, we don't, we'll have some burials um, that have occurred. Parks me measurements pretty consistent from year to year. Uh, we, we, we just actually the, we planted this past week, which is in the second quarter, but we did 90 trees, so that will be a reflection on your on your next uh, quarterly report. So we've been active in, in our forestry in terms of removal and elevating during the winter. That's a good time with no leaves on the trees. We can do quite a bit of work. Motor vehicle fund, I'll just, you know, park an open space. Not again, with the winter, not a lot of activity with, with that occurring right now, other than the number of ash trees that we were able to remove in the, in the, in the first quarter, 312. Motor vehicles been very busy with winter operations. You know, we've done about 79% preventative uh, maintenance completion rate, and partly it's not as high as we'd like. Is partly because of the need to keep the snow and ice uh, equipment operational. So that takes priority during that time. Uh, recycling, 
measuring the, the, the tonnage, we're, we're right on pace again of where we need to be. And I'm hoping to see that tick up as well with more and more residents staying home during the pandemic and the stay at home orders. Wastewater, we're doing great. Got an A rating and that's where we like to see it. Uh, thanks to Steve and his staff at the treatment plant. And uh, the boat facilities fund, lastly, the repair request. We've only really had one repair um, at, at this time in the first quarter. And occupancy of the, the boat facilities, and this is primarily the riverfront docks, um, is, is low right now. Um, the water's high. Water's high. <laughs> we, weren't, we were not able, we weren't, we, and when we replaced the docks, we were able to add some extra slips. So, and um, boating is, is, is kind of regressed a little bit. So what we've been able to do is those vacant spots we've used as transient or, or day slips for visitors to come into Harbor Park and be able to hit the shops along the riverfront. And that's worked well. Perfect. So that's pretty much the quarterly benchmark report. And again, um, you know, for your review and for your information, and by all means, take some time, review it. If you have any questions, feel free to contact my office and, and happy to provide more detail or anything in terms of uh, any questions that you may have. Any, any questions from the committee? Yeah, it, hey, it, uh, David, it's Ryan. Um, I guess it's, it's more about um, a future sort of... Um, planning thought that I have. So in terms of, you know, we're rolling out the, the new recycling carts, are we going to be tracking those in a different way? I know, you know, we're tracking recycling. Um, or are we projecting that our numbers are going to go up or are we going to be tracking those in different, um, you know, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. Um, how, how are we going to be incorporating that in our in yeah. strategic we, planning um, in the benchmarks in the future? It, it will be we'll, we'll we'll have it as a as an probably as a as a point in time that from this point forward the cart cart based system is now in effect. We're we're anticipating at least a ten percent increase in recycling rates. It it we when you go okay. to when you go to a cart base it 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 because you only have one garbage cart. It's going to force people to separate and put incentivize in, people for recycling. Correct. So we're we're really we're mm -hmm. you know trends when we we've seen this from the the professionals that we worked with with the cart based system seen anywhere from a ten to twenty percent uh, increase in recycling rates or diversion rate from garbage. So uh, we're, we're going to be tracking that and we're interested in seeing how that rolls out um, with with the new carts. Cool. How have um, how has the rollout been? Have you guys been receiving any um, pushback or any specific calls at all? Oh, we've got. <laughs> I can. Dawn is here, and I can have her talk to that. talk to about that di directly. But yes, we we the carts are rolling out there. It, it's been a good process. Uh, the the car the company is actually somewhat ahead of schedule. They're about a day or two ahead of where they anticipated to be. Uh, probably the biggest calls are, you know, whoa, you know, um, the lids aren't closing. Uh, and it's partly because of the shipping. And what will happen is once, once they're out and the lids are closed, after a couple of days, the, the, the plastic mm -hmm. gets relaxes. back to its normal normalcy. But during the shipping, they kind of get warped yeah. and, and things. So that's been a, a, a complaint. Um, you know, and if I if I don't if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman, if I could defer to Dawn. And, yes, please. And, and sh since her staff has been instrumental, they've they've field um, each person's about fifty calls a day right now. But it sounds like a lot, but oh, it's wow. but it's it, but it, it it's been positive here. Yeah, come on down. Hi. <laughs> so most of the calls are are typically just people confirming what their garbage day is. Um, are they on an A or B schedule for recycling, things of that nature, and just um, wanting confirmation as to what they can recycle. There are a lot of questions about bags, um, not bagging recycling. A lot of citizens are very excited about that. Um, but we do typically defer, we, we answer the questions, but then we also advertise for our DPW website and yep. we actually, some people will call yep. and be right at their computer. Yep. So we're able to walk them through doing a search for what they're looking at as far as what they want to recycle. So we are definitely promoting the information on our website, which 
I believe our citizens are very excited about. You bet. I've heard nothing but good. Um, the one thing um, that I did hear is that they started using them right away, which is not a good situation. Yes, we had a little situation on Good Friday. Um, so we did deliver to, to, the, to the south side. And some of our south siders were very excited about using their garbage carts. So they, they ended up putting their garbage and putting their carts out. Um, so we, I was in, and uh, the lead man, Bruce Matzdorf, was in as well. And we started getting a few calls as far as the garbage wasn't being picked up. So Bruce mm -hmm. took a little ride and determined that our citizens are just very excited. Despite yes. the, um, we did put an informational packet in each cart promoting okay. our May 4th start date. But again, um, it is what it is. So we were able to pick up the garbage and, you know, we are tracking our calls on spreadsheets and finding out what are our hot topics. And then we're able, we're, we're able to alter our website. Um, so we can, we can put those questions front row center to help citizens and navigate them to answer their questions. That's a really good idea. Dawn, have you guys actually kept track of the actual areas to see, no pun intended, but there's a hot spot where maybe some yes. future education in that in that neighborhood association or something could work? Absolutely. Our okay. website does have addresses um, because what's happening is when we are delivering the company we're working for, they actually have a schedule. So right now we've delivered to different areas of the South Side. So we're documenting the citizen's name as well as their address. Okay. So we will be able to potentially, like you said, go in and speak at the neighborhood association. I think that would be really good information to at some point pass on to the alders mm -hmm. so that if I'm an alder that has an area that's, you know, having a lot of questions, I can reach out to that area or set up a neighborhood association sure. meeting. That's perfect. a great idea. We can definitely get that yeah. information to you. No, perfect. Any questions from the committee? Um, the only question I have, David, I just saw you had the one about the sirens. Um, where is that siren located? Because I know this <laughs> this week, week, I think Thursday, we're having the test, and I'm sure yes. we may get calls. So I'm that and I'm going to defer to Mike Wilmis. I believe Mike is on the line yet. Yes, I am, David. And that siren was fixed today. That siren is located at End Park. Okay. At End Park. Okay. Well, that's that's going to be more your, your Yeah, that's, a, that's my problem, I guess. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. You'll have Thank that you, fixed, right? It is. It is. It is operational. Oh, it is. Okay. As of today. Okay. Otherwise, I'd have to have you up on the pole yelling. <laughs> Perfect. We got it. We got it done. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Okay. If there's uh, no further questions from the committee, we'll move on to three point nine. Uh, the COVID up uh, impacts public works discussion only. David? Yeah, the, the, the main impact uh, clearly is our garbage collection. Uh, it's still being picked up manually, so we've been working with our, our, our operators, making sure they're wearing the proper PPE, protective equipment that they need, uh, making sure that, um, you know, we've, we've split shifts. So construction crews are coming in earlier, uh, so that not ev every morning everyone's arriving at the same time, congregating, so we're keeping... Construction Perfect. crews come in earlier. Garbage men start, you know, the garbage crews start at their normal time. Um, the other areas, such as our park staff, they're, they're spread out in, in different parts of the building, as well as uh, we have some that report directly, like, to the lakefront every morning. So we've been able to separate employees and keep them um, practicing good social distancing in terms of a good employment practices. Um, and... I just stress the need that um, to 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 be safe at all times. We, you know, one of the things you know we, we it's it's imperative that the the garbage carts get delivered. We received three of the trucks are now here, so the, and the the other four are at the facility being fitted and retrofitted. And by next week, we should have all of our uh, automated garbage trucks and recycling trucks. At, at our facility ready to go. And in fact, uh, as of last Saturday, the one truck we had, we have uh, operators in on the weekend, practicing, getting familiar with it, driving in, in their actual neighborhoods and trying to you know, get familiar with it and look out for obstacles and trees and whatever or, or other uh, wires that could be potentially in, in the way. So 
uh, we'll have a good week, two weeks to to work out those details as well. Now, David, because of uh, the COVID situation, I believe they were originally going to do some training up in Green Bay. Is that been yeah? We're not we're not doing that. We're we're staying you know everything staying local, home. and that's that's why we're going to use our own equipment as yep. well as um, practice with it, with the stuff that we have available within our shop currently. Perfect. Uh, yeah, we're, we're you know. Maintenance personnel are, are, are cleaning, doing the proper cleaning of city hall, service building, and public areas for, for the occupants of, of the employees as well. Um, so it, it has impacted, as I mentioned, at, at the mayor's special council meeting. Uh, some of our construction projects, Superior Avenue, we're holding off on the start on that. Uh, the Badger Lofts project, we're down where uh, Rock Line is located. We're kind of holding off on that water main, given given the situation yep. with the with their production, and uh, as well as Geely Avenue is kind of on hold with the water main and the ability we need to get into homes for the water meters so that we're able to change out the lead services. So. Um, you know, we're, we're monitoring the situation. Uh, Superior Avenue should still go. Uh, I think the contractor is scheduled in June, June, June 22nd to get going on that. We're anticipating June 22nd. Hopefully things will be uh, somewhat back to normal. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't know if we'll ever get there. But in terms of work and production, in that sense, the project should get going. Um, we're looking, hopefully, ideally, by that time, rock line in that area will have a better sense in terms of what we're able to do with the water main as well. As How that. long will the water main be down for rock line, just out of curiosity? I wanted to say, was it, um, did you have a call, recall? Was it was about two weeks, did they say, Ooh. the water main? Or to do the work, correct. The, the switchover would be, okay. Okay. Couple, yeah. Okay. So we'll have to work with them and see what, as things calm down. Correct. One of the things is when we construct, we're, we're right next and we're right in the area. And if you're pounding pavement and digging, yeah. the potential is, is that you could disrupt the existing main and potentially cause a failure and then they'd be out of water. And that's what we'd be, we're really right. concerned with right now. Right. Okay. Excellent. All right. Hey, David, this is Mike Wellness. Yes, Mike. You got it fixed already? Yes, um, just a... <laughs> Yeah, I got it fixed. Um, <laughs> on reference to the COVID-19 and everything, between Meredith and I, we did uh, contract with Sintas and uh, disinfect uh, all voting polls, that's including all the churches, senior center, and whatnot. Yeah, you guys did a great job over the voting uh, period. Thank you. All right. Any additional questions? Otherwise, we'll move on to. to yeah, I, I have a question. I have, I have a question just in terms of parks. Um, David, could you just clarify? I know like park facilities and park shelters and like playground equipment is closed. Are people still able to you know walk around the park and um, and that sort of thing? Can you yeah. just Clarify that. Yes. Yeah, so the the park the parks are open to to take a walk and 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 uh, enjoy enjoy the scenery. Um, again, you know, we they want, we want to practice some of the social distancing. You know, we 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 still yeah. have have like our skate park is is still available. Our paths are still available. The facilities themselves, such as the shelters and the the restrooms, are closed. And 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 but yet. The open spaces are, are still available at this time, and um, they've been popular. Uh, they, and um, we've noticed a, 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 a pretty good uptick in terms of what we have as our park garbage facilities as well. We have a, our, our garbage routes for just our parks, and, and we've seen um, quite a bit of usage where at this time of the year it's really non-existent. So that, that's been an interesting trend that we've been monitoring as well. And one thing, you know, we yeah, I, I appreciate, yeah, yeah, and, and I appreciate, you know, us keeping the parks open and, and let's do everything we can to make sure that they're still safe and folks are able to get out and enjoy that. I, I know um, I was at uh, Color Andre the, the day before that the governor closed that and um, it, it was busy. Um, you know, I, I don't necessarily know if I fully agree with closing the parks uh, at the state level, but I, I want to do what we can to keep keep our parks open um, in a safe manner. So, so thanks, David, for your team and um, your effort on, on doing what you can on that. Thanks. Just just one one other note is that you know we we did have to cancel quite a bit of reservations 
uh, during this time. It was around 50 reservations to the tune of, you know, we, we re refunded around $12,000 in, in, in rental fees. Uh, and, and we're starting to get some special events canceled. And, you know, uh, you know, I, you know we, we've seen the Memorial Day Parade. I believe Monkfest is, is canceled already. So some of the larger type of events that we would host in our parks are now starting to be uh, canceled for the season as well. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but these are tough times. All right. Um, just quick, uh, do you anticipate still opening up like um, Evergreen is, is, uh, on schedule like normally with, for drive through or is that kind of on a hold I, also? I, I think we're going to hold off on allowing the drive through is because so many people are walking okay. and they're enjoying just being able to walk without traffic. Okay. And I think since there's no... Uh, areas really to stop and necessarily use a facility uh we're going to kind of try to keep that closed to traffic until this is cleared okay good question any additional questions from the committee on 3.9 hearing none we'll move forward to uh 310 3.10 uh, our five-year capital improvement project cip for the years of 2021 and through 2025 David? Yes, Mr. Chairman. We, we, and annually, we want to share kind of what, we've, what our requests are for the next five-year program with the committee members, give you an update um, where we're at and uh, what will be going eventually to the Capital Improvements Commission at early as, as early as the end of this month for their initial review um, and ultimately ranking of, of <coughs> projects that will be ultimately put as part of a package to back to the Common Council uh, for your consideration. But uh, most of the, when you see items highlighted, that either means that it's, it's consistent with a prior request, and it's either been shifted a year, or it's right on track um, in terms of prior requests from prior years. That's why you see 2025 is, doesn't have any highlighted um, figures necessarily um, for the most part. Uh, for city buildings, you know, again, minis the municipal service building, uh, as I mentioned, is over 50 years, and it, it, every, we, every year we seem to be doing, you know, some capital improvements to keep that building functional and operational. Um, although it's 50 years old uh, plus, it is a wonderfully designed building for being that age, and it's very um, laid out efficiently for our operations. Nevertheless, um, the generator is still original. Uh, so in, in 2021, we are going to be replacing that as well as probably the, the, um, the um, switch gear and some of the panel work, the wiring that will needed to be upgraded as well um, with that. So um, there's a design component of that as well as the generator replacement and then the panel gets replaced in 2022. We talk, uh, there's, a, there's a wash bay inside the building, uh, but it's, it's, again, original, and it's very narrow, and it's not very conducive, and it seems that our equipment's getting larger and more uh, complicated as we speak every year in terms of its multifunctionality. Therefore, the, the, the wash bay needs to be somewhat expanded as well as updated. Um, with it, with it, the overspray has caused quite a bit of corrosion on the ceiling. So we, we're going to need to do some uh, work on that anti-corrosion anti recoating and painting. So that's, that's a concern we're looking at. As well as there's garage drains that were upgraded, I'd say, probably 20 years ago in the building. And even still, they're, they're undersized for a lot of the snow melt and in the oils and grease, it is a sanitary, it goes to the sanitary sewer uh, because of the oils and greases that, that get collected and washed off the floor. So we need to get that so it, it, it works properly and drains properly in the building. We also have uh, at, uh, it, within our buildings, you'll see this is kind of a, a, a newer program, but it's ADA, uh, we, we did an uh, American and Disabilities Act audit of the city, primarily of our parks, facilities, and public areas, as well as all of our public buildings. And as part of the act, 
we're, we're, we're in need to make sure that we're in compliance and we have a plan. That plan that was uh, presented and we worked with our, our CIVMIC insurance group, it's about a $2 million project. It doesn't all have to be done in, in five years, but we have a plan, we have a good document, everything's been identified. So what we've put in here, which you'll see starting in 2021 is, $250,000 on an annual basis moving forward, specifically for addressing Americans with Disabilities Act accessibility upgrades. And we alternate between our parks and public facilities areas, our public open spaces, I should say, and then our public buildings. So one year we're gonna concentrate on our park system and open and sidewalks and, and accessibility in the community. Then the other year is gonna be focused then on public buildings. You know, City Hall has been great, but we have the library, we have the police station, we have the service building, we have, we have um, our, our fire stations, our police, you know, other facilities um, that we have throughout the community will need to be upgraded. Moving on to traffic control. Again, when you see the highlighted figures, look, this is, these are annual programs that we've, that we've kept consistent from prior uh, requests moving forward. So our LED street lighting upgrades and our, um, for, from in our TID districts in the downtown area, as well as citywide, that's an annual program that we've been able to consistently, systematically take part of our street lighting network and convert to LED. It's been a good program and um, it's been well received and uh, you're starting to see that conversion. You see the high pressure sodium or what I would say the orange colored mm -hmm. lights switch over to the bright white metal halide. Um, I'm gonna move right on, right into the next page where we get into motor vehicle. We've worked with the city administrator's office as well as the finance director's office to, to kind of scale back. We've been, we've been over a million dollars a year roughly on motor vehicle and we've been real aggressive. We're at a stage now, especially now with our new garbage packers that we've received the fleet's in fairly good condition. And what we've done is we've cut that virtually in half to right around 500,000, give or take, um, is where we want to be. So again, you'll see a lot of highlighted um, items here that these uh, pieces of equipment are consistent with prior years and moving forward with, with a plan that, that Rick Nye, our motor vehicle supervisor, has done a, a, a real good job in terms of laying out as what pieces of equipment are depreciated, which are, are at the point that it's cost effective to, to trade and, and, and move these on. So um, I'm not gonna go into every piece of equipment that you're, you're all, I've been on the committee for some time and you can just read that the type of equipment. Again, uh, we'll move right into parks and forestry. What you see is, again, a continuation of our urban forestry management plan and Emerald Ash Borer uh, project. Uh, roughly, it's around 200,000, 210,000. It's a combination of, you know, some park and open space fund and, and, and um, other, other sources of funding to help. We're, we're, we're continuing to do removals. We're continuing to treat. We're now in a phase where we're retreating trees. We've treated all the ash trees that we were able to treat. However, we're seeing some of those trees not, you know, there's a, there's a certain percentage of those trees even that we're going to lose. Right. So we're seeing that and they get added to the removal list. So we're, we're going to continue to remove trees, but we're, we're going to start seeing a real concentration starting probably in 2023 and 2024 and beyond of where this becomes ma majority of a replanting program. We've been able to replant, but yet we're still at, a, we're still at the phase or stage where we're, we're, we have a net loss. We're removing more trees than we're able to replant right now. We just gotta focus on catching up, getting those dead trees out. Eventually, that should, we should get to a point where the pendulum switches and we'll be planting more trees versus removal. You see, we have some uh, renovations of playground equipment at N Park. A couple of new ones that, you, you, that are on for 2021 are, are the Maywood Environmental Center. There's, uh, again, that's a facility that uh, 
had an addition put on. The addition's fairly new back in the early 2000s, but the original structure is probably from the 50s. That needs to have some, some repairs. So uh, we have that as a new request. The Werner subdivision that, we've, that we know is coming, we, we have 50,000 in there for some grading and parkways and, 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 and infrastructure. And again, here, here's another one, as I mentioned earlier, the ADA improvements, 250,000 for city wide. Again, moving forward, the, the, the new request for 2022 would be Evergreen Area 3. It's a very popular area where it doesn't have a shelter. And what we're just talking is a, is, is a shelter for shade. It's not a bathroom because there's a bathroom close by in Area 4 where we could combine with that. So that's been a, a, new, a new request. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, moving forward again, the, the only th other thing new in 2023 is again that a ADA. We have a Cleveland Park splash pad. Uh, Cleveland Park has the, a shelter in the bathroom, but it has the plumbing roughed in for a splash pad, similar to what was done at Optimus Park. It's the same kind of look, which just ready to go. We've just been kind of doing one of those every five years, roughly. Again, and then uh, in 2024, an, an, a new request would be the, the Veterans Park tennis court resurfacing that we're, we're showing. And ultimately, in 2025, you know, we, we're working with a, a, a consultant on Quarry Park. We have put in there some placeholder holders for, for 2025 for some master plan improvements at Quarry. And uh, the next page is our streets. And um, again, this is a, you'll see a lot of highlighted. We've been able to try to be as consistent as possible in terms of laying out our street repair program and resurfacing program. Uh, a, couple, a couple new ones that we've been trying to really focus on is one would be for 2021 is Washington Avenue uh, from South Business Drive to Taylor. Uh, that, that asphalt is really starting to uh, rapidly deteriorate, so we have to get on it before it gets too far gone and it gets more costly. Uh, same thing with the, the South Business Drive and, and, and Georgia Avenue intersection. You know, that's going to be TID-based, TID and uh, that project will, will have new signals and some um, improvements made at, at 14th Street in Georgia as well. In 2022, uh, and, I, and, and just so I think I've included it in your packet, um, we emailed you also a, a PDF of, you know, a city map of all of our roads. So it shows completed streets since 2013 on the map, and it shows the planned projects from 2020 through 2025 uh, for you as well. And if you ever want, a, if you ever want a larger size of a map, that map, just let us know, and we can print you off a larger size. Thank you. Um, again, you know, moving around here, we, you know, we, I just want to probably highlight the ones that were, are, are newer that aren't highlighted, such as pa panel replacement. So Calumet Drive and, and 14th Street, it's a state trunk highway. But if you, if you realize it, it's, it's all concrete pavement, and we're starting to get at some of the joints where they're starting to delaminate our, 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 our pop we, is probably the more... Uh, common term people would probably say. So what we what we're going to do is saw those joints out, put new dowels in, and and repave with concrete. Uh, so that's what a concrete panel kind of a placement. That it it an overlay on that street really is would be money wasted it, with, since we can get in there and do these panels and we can st strategically get in there and fix the bad panels. The street will be much better served long term. So that's what that project is. We bought a half a million dollars on that. <clears throat> For um, I'm just uh, I'm backing up here. I'm trying to highlight the newer ones. So it, we're looking um, in 2024, you know, we have a million dollars roughly right now for for North 15th Street, and we're looking at design on that. That that could be a total reconstruct. Um, it's in a it's in a area that needs needs some 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 
rehab as well. We're looking at probably doing what we call as a road diet. I think it's 52 feet face to face. It's really wide. There's not much terrace, so we would probably bring that in. Um, it's 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 not needed to be that wide. Traffic volumes don't don't necessarily dictate that. And so if we would reconstruct it, narrow it up, we could add a, a really nice terrace with trees to plant, landscaping. We've already started the process working with Alliant to consider burying a lot. There's a tremendous amount of utility poles and um, three-phase power along this corridor that we're working with Alliant to consider burying it and getting it out of the streetscape. And we could really, really enhance this neighborhood as well as the street. I'm looking for that in 2024. Um, and lastly, it, it, it's wastewater. And again, wastewater, uh, we're, we're fairly consistent, but probably the biggest one that you're aware of in that where we, we, we really don't have a cost at this stage. It's really preliminary yet. And I just put in for 2021, $8 million for the South uh, Shore, South Side Lakeshore uh, sewer in, uh, interceptor that needs to be rehabbed. Um, Right now, Fulth Infrastructure, uh, the design team out of Green Bay is working with us. Uh, they're going to be down here, in fact, tom tomorrow. And we're going to be looking at some manholes, walking it, um, getting some further uh, rehab. Right now, the good news is the pipe is in fairly good shape so we can line it. And it doesn't have to be reconstructed or moved or relayed at this point. So that's a good thing, but yet it's still a very expensive endeavor. So we'll, we'll keep you up to date. We've, um, we've, we've sent letters to the outlying communities that contribute sewage to this line, notifying them that they will need to participate in this as well yep. in terms of flow allocation and capital financing of this uh, project as well. We've reached out to the state senators, uh, Senator Baldwin and... Um, Let me hear. Yep. So that will... Uh, for potential federal funding on, on this. So we're, 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 we're going to approach all avenues in terms of uh, federal. We're looking at the Corps of Engineers, if there's help, because it's along the Lake Michigan shoreline. So um, stay tuned. It, this, is a, this is a dynamic project that will be um, very interesting in the future. But Steve has really, what you see in the yellow and blue is, is Steve's plant work that he's very consistent with. Uh, we're primarily using annual proceeds in terms of our annual revenues to fund projects on an annual basis and not use debt at the treatment plant. Um, we've had in the past some pretty large projects and now with the, we're, we're anticipating clearly debt on the interceptor project, but the, the cover replacement and some of the clarifiers in the actual at the plant facilities we're able to do most of those projects with financed revenues through the rates and not necessarily debt finance them. So that's our goal. Excellent. So that's a real high level overview. Um, but the thing that I guess for the committee members is there's a lot of highlighted items on here. So you, we've talked about many of these projects in the past. We're consistent in terms of trying to keep this plan moving forward. Things have shifted maybe from year to year to get the financing and the numbers to work out, but yet the requests are, are fairly consistent. I, I think you guys did a great job. I know it's been very difficult year over year, uh, especially last year when some of our um, budgets got moved around a little bit because of uh, funding changes and things like that. So good job to everybody. I know it's difficult because we, we're continuing to replace and improve and, and develop things, but um, with less and less coming in, unless we continue to develop more and increase our revenues, it's, it's difficult. Um, any questions from the committee on 3.10? On 3 I know it's a lot of capital improvements. Dean? Yep. Um, I just had two, two, two quick questions. Um, I did not see anything on, on Indiana Avenue the, from the 24th to 17th Street <coughs> section. I, I believe the County is doing from Taylor to 24th. I, uh, we were kind of had that on the, the radar. I just was wondering if that's still on the radar. Yeah, actually, the, the, the county is going to do their section. We had a meeting today in 2022. Yes. 
Um, we, 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 we applied for uh, a grant to see if we could get that funded through the state. Okay. Because we were looking at a reconstruction yes. originally, and I think that was around anywhere from a three point five to four point five million dollar project. So you're right that it's not in here now uh, because it got dropped because we didn't get any funding for it. Okay. So what we're looking at doing is probably in 2023 is looking at a a, a, a pretty con a major resurfacing of that section from 17th Street to around 24th Street. And what we'd be doing is potentially also looking at if we're able to add some bike lanes in there. Okay, and what, we've, what we're considering is if we asphalt it, mm -hmm. uh, there's a new process of colorizing, putting some colored pavement instead of just blacktop. We could color the bike lane either a, either a red or a green to differentiate it from the road nice. to, to provide. And so we're, we're, we think this could be a real, we haven't used that yet in Sheboygan and, and we think that this could be a real nice section to give that uh, an opportunity to try and really enhance that section of roadway. Okay. Uh, the other question I had was um, the Qantas Park. Um, is, is that also, I know that you're looking for, for uh, block grant money and things like that. So that's kind of a that, way. Right. And, that, and that's, in a, we're, we're working with Chad and his office in terms of community block grant development. We're kind of going through the master plan at mm -hmm. Kiwanis and refining some of those numbers. Uh, because of that, because this is more what I, what I would say in, our, in, in the budget for improvements, this is either using park and open space fund or impact fee or general obligation borrowing, the, which we have in front of you does not have the block grant. And okay. I think what we're looking at, in fact, we have a meeting this week, Thursday, to talk about some block grant opportunities. Okay. with Chad's office. So as soon as we get a little further refined in terms of what's available in, in his budget that is available for Kiwanis Park, we will share those plans with you. Okay, thank you. Excellent. Any additional questions from, from the committee members? Hearing none, we'll, uh, we'll consider that complete. Thank you, David, thank you. and thank you to your team. Um, we'll move on to our next meeting, 4.1. Next regular meeting date is April 28th, 2020. And uh, then uh, 5.1, looking for a motion to adjourn Senate I. Motion to adjourn Senate I. Dean. Is Ryan second. Exactly. All right. All in favor for um, um, adjournment, Synod I. Aye. Aye. Todd, Dean. Aye. Rose. Aye. Ackley. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you. Be safe. Thank you. Thank you. But it's it's looks something wrong while we're constructing and knock them out. <laughs> so we lost. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, we can, we can yeah. Make it, make it look nice. Yeah. 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 Well, there's one section I know uh, about between 23rd and 22nd, kind of. There's a where it, it, it looks like, and I actually think it was actually a newer section that was, it, 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 it's like, it, it's, Significantly dropped. Okay.
Okay. Yeah. Okay. That'll work. Okay. Okay. Yes, well, we just like I said, I don't, I don't want to make promises that you're going to say, oh yeah, we got this coming going. <laughs> it's like, oh. But it, it always is good to ask. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Five thirty-five to two thirty-two, I guess. But not, not to say any bad about the mark, but I'm, I'm actually surprised you got two thirty-two. <laughs> so. But yeah. All right, I, I did want to say. David, um, the, the the city forester, um, he helped me out with. So I, I just want to say thank you. That he did a really nice job. You just recognize that he really. We had a situation where uh, American transmissions could come in through, and they're just hacking. Yeah, they're, 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 yeah. Yeah. They don't care, and they just go through and. Yes. Well, then, well, the problem is, is this gentleman, he's got, a, he's got a, an abandoned alley by his property, plus then he's got the railroad's property by his property. So, and he's kind of treated that as his own for, and nobody said anything or done anything for it for probably 30 years. And he's been all happy. He's got all these nice trees planted. American Transmission came along and said, 40 feet, doesn't matter. But we don't care if it's, you know, they're lilac bushes. Doesn't matter. Yep. Yep. They came through and they just, you know, but. Yeah. Well, no, they they, they, they took everything down. They, but he was upset because they were taking everything down because, you know, it, this was his buffer to the railroad tracks there. You know, he, you know, he, 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 there was no, you know, and his, he was upset and, he, you know, the, the um, what, what is his name? Is it? Did it, um, Tim? Or, Tim, Tim, Bull. Tim Bull, yeah, he came and he, he was he was really good with the guy, you know, explained to the guy, he's like, hey, you know, I agree with you, this is, but we have no, we have nothing to say, we can't, they, because they have, it's a public safety thing, even though, you know, that tree's never going to reach 40 feet, but they have the rights, because it's American Transmission, and you know, and he, yeah. he kind of explained it to the gentleman for me, and he helped out a lot. I really appreciate this that. Is, so. this is the okay, congrats you, also. You <laughs> I know. Still, I'm still surprised that he got 232 even. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what? You said. Yeah. 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 It's still, it's still, I got 535, but it was still like a million. And, and, and the thing is, is he, and, and, and yeah, but you know, Mark, Mark went knocking door to door, but he went knocking door to door in this. I'm like, I'm not going to go. <laughs> Like, yeah, that's what everybody wants you to do is walk up to your door and start. <laughs> well, and his, and his pamphlet was like full, full of, it was so, full, oh yeah, full of misspellings and it was all just, you know, well, it was just a copy book, you know, copy machine to take off of it. It's like, don't take it personal. <laughs> 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 the problem is that's when, that's when the table taps. Why didn't you do it? No, no, no. I Good night, everyone.